Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Reverend William Holder from Faith Deliverance Center in the island of Bermuda. Again, it is a pleasure to bring to you a message from the Word of God. We would like to speak to you out of the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 9 to 12. And we will use for our topic, moral depravity. Our topic, moral depravity. Now in Hosea chapter 10, verse 9 to 12, it is recorded, O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeah. Do they stood the battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity? Did not overtake them? It is in my desire that I should chastise them, and the people shall be gathered against them, when they shall bind themselves in the two pharaohs. Nephim is as and heifer, that is toward, I love to tread out the corn, but I pass over upon her for an neck. I will make Ephraim to rise. Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break his clubs. So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fellow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. You see, God charged the people with being more depraved. People were guilty of uh, the same horrendous acts committed by the people of Gibeah, uh, the very same wicked spirit that had gripped the city of Gibeah some centuries earlier continued to spread until it permeated society. Uh, people like many today defy God and persisted in their wicked behavior, committing acts of sexual perversion or that is homosexuality, rape, assault, abuse, and murder. And despite God's continued plea for repentance, uh, people like many today, the people kept on living morally depraved lives. My friend, as a result of the people's wicked behavior and the corruption of the society, God pronounced his coming judgment upon them. For the Lord would punish the people by allowing other nations to conquer and enslave them. And the reference to the people's two first or double sins means one of two things. It means either that the people were guilty of multiplied sins, that they were guilty of forsaken God and of turning to fool God. Second, God would judge the people by putting the yoke of bondage on both Israel and Judah. My friend, up until that time, Ephraim or Israel had been like a pain cow, unyoked by thrusting grain. But now God was going to put a yoke upon the people and force them to do the heavy work of breaking up the unplowed ground. And this is a good picture of the northern kingdom being led into captivity by Assyria and the southern kingdom being led into captivity by Babylon. God's heart, my friend, was utterly broken over the people's behavior, their moldy parody, another act of violence. But even in the midst of the Israelites' wickedness, God still loved his people. Therefore, he offers them a final opportunity to repent. Repentance, my friend, involves three steps. First, the people had to show righteousness in order to reap God's love. If they wanted God's blessings, they had to turn completely away from the wicked lifestyle. They had to turn to the Lord and obey his holy commandments. If they would heed God's call to his pandas, the Lord would pour out his love upon them. Of course, this suggests 
that he would save them from the coming judgment. Second, the people had to begin to live a new life, which is symbolized by bringing up new on plow ground. Up to now, the lives have been like ground that had never been turned over and open up to the Lord. Before it was too late, the people had to break up the stony ground of the hearts. They could receive God's holy word if they would open up the hearts to him and begin to live a new life by obeying his holy commandments. The Lord will pour out his love upon them and deliver them from the coming judgment that the people had to seek the Lord if they would begin to seek him to come to them and shout righteousness upon them to stand justified before God and he would accept them and the new ground of the hearts will produce the fruitful harvest of love joy and peace as promised in God's holy word. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 having accepted the three verse 19 or two repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out for the times of refreshing shall come from the promise of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 72, let the wicked forsake his way, and the righteous man is told, and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God warns us against immoral behavior, against wicked, perverted, and degenerate acts. In no uncertain terms, he condemns such sins as homosexuality, rape, abuse of soul, and murder. Listen to what God's holy word says about depravity. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 19, verse 18, verse 2, he said to him, which Jesus says, thou shalt do no matter. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not burn witness. My friend was told in the word in Romans, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the righteousness of men who hold the truth and the righteousness. So that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed unto them that the invisible things of him from the beginning, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and go ahead to the day of without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither was thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. For fashion themselves be wide, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncropped of God into uh, an image made like to corrupt the man and to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, to lust of their own heart, to design of their own body between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto wild affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against my friend nature. And likewise also the man leaving the natural use of the moon burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men wrecking that bitch unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of that error which was me even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient my friend being filled with all unrighteousness fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignant, the rest was backbiters, haters of God, despiteful pride, boasters, bands of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, impossible, who knowing the judgment of God that they commit 
such things are worthy of that not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. And the psalmist tells us in Psalm 12, 1, my friend, how Lord, for the godly men ceases, for the faithful fall from among the children of men. And the scripture in which we just privately mentioned was in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. Ah, my friend, in Micah chapter 7, verse 2, the good man is perished out of the earth. The none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. In Psalm 12, 1, help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. The faithful fail from among the children of men. In 1 John 3, 15, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. God bless you and God be with you. It's a prayer of our hearts.